Hey KBFers, Chad Hoover here, Kayak Bass and TV, and this week I am back at Highland Rim Retreats with Dr. Chris Sawyer of Knoxville, Tennessee. And here's what we're doing. Last week we found the bass on the beds, but the temperatures come up, and I'm suspecting that the fish have moved out of the shallow bedding areas, and they're back in the staging areas in the recovery phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Chris around and check some of the staging areas looking for his personal best. Chris' goal is to walk away from this trip with a 10-pound bass, and so we're going to start off throwing some plastics into deep wood in 6 to 10 foot of water, and then we're going to work our way over during the peak feeding times and check some of my primary staging areas, which also act as recovering areas after the fish move off the beds. Didn't even have the camera running yet. I'm just trying to find fish. I caught that toad right there, right out of the gate. It chomped the lizard. Uh, Chris is throwing the whopper plopper along the bank looking for aggressive fish. And I figured I'd work some offshore points and uh, humps when checking some of my waypoints to see if these fish that have spawned have moved back off into deeper water. And if you can see right there, that fish's tail is red. That means a lot of these fish are in what I call the recovery phase. Uh, and they'll go back to the exact same spots they staged in. So two weeks ago when I was catching fish staging here, before they moved up to, the, to spawn, um, they were in those areas staging. Now they're in those spots. Um, in the recovery phase. So this fish right here looks like she's already spawned out. I would guess she's probably seven pounds, but I'm gonna throw her on the boga and uh, find out for sure. And I'll put how big she is in the uh, comment section below. <laughs> Chris just got a monster on his first cast with the lizard. Oh, don't walk your hand up the rod. Bring it to you, bring it to you. Matter of fact, let's, oh, 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 you dropped the rod right there. Let's do this this way. Bring him over here. Oh, he's almost too big for the net. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> Look at that dude right there. Chris. Holy. Chris, give me some slack, man. All right, put that rod between your legs. You just lost a rod and uh, the lure, and I don't know if it's going to float back up. You want me to go diving again? No, just put that rod between your legs so it. So it don't happen again. I got a rod. <laughs> Look at that fish he just got right there. Holy crap, brother. Gotta weigh that one, yeah, we will. All right, Chris, put that big girl back in the water and let her go do her thing. And there she goes. Healthy fish. The powerful kick of the tail. Congrats, brother. Thank you. <laughs> fish of a lifetime. Okay guys, so what I'm doing now is I've got a seven and Chris has got an eight and got both of those on soft plastics on secondary points where the fish were staging two weeks ago prior to the spawn. Last week they were spawning and then they're back on those secondary points in what I call the recovery phase. But I've got a bunch of big fish out in front of me. As you can tell, I'm out here in open water. They're really pelagic and just moving around and busting bait. They're not over any particular cover or structure and so I'm out here with the Mike Buka's um, bull shad and throwing this thing just hoping to you know find some of these big bullying fish that are out here what they're doing is they're feeding back up after the spawn chasing these big pods of shad uh, there's some gizzard shad in here so I'm trying to mimic that uh, and, and making high cast to where the bait comes down hard instead of trying to be subtle uh, I want that bait to hit the water and be like a bloop, and that's a symbol to other fish that something just got eaten over there. And so if you've ever caught one fish and brought it in and there's a couple with it, uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to simulate when I make these kind of high arcing casts, let the bait hit the water flat sided. It gives it that bloop and it sounds like a fish blowing up on it, which a lot of times when you don't have any structural or cover cues to go off of, uh, it can almost sound like and serve as a dinner bell, if you will, uh, for calling in big bass. So I've done this successfully on Gunnersville. Uh, I've done it successfully uh, on Pickwick. I've done it successfully on Old Hickory. I've done it successfully on, I mean, almost all your major lakes that I fish uh, using this bull shad when you've got these fish in that recovery phase that are out in the open water chasing big pods of shad pushing them up on the surface and just blowing them up. You know, that bait hitting that water flat side and making a big 
explosion sounds like a fish blowing up on it and it gets our attention and says oh somebody must be eating over there so they're going to run over there and so then slow reeling that bait and having it tick 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 clicking along that clicking sounds like a school of bait fish um, with that bait rattling and man this thing is just deadly effective so hopefully i can find a big girl uh, if i'm not able to connect with the big girl right now that doesn't mean this technique doesn't work so uh you know find yourself one of these bull shad or something similar to it but a big jointed clicking swim bait throwing it high letting it flat sided land on the water when fish are busting on top and bullying bait is a good way for post spawn uh catching the biggest fish in the area so tie one of those on and get out there and try to catch you one oh yeah look at that that's a good size one right there mine's off so much man them digital scales sometimes just you concur oh yeah let me see her yeah you can see the six yeah see the six. dead on six pounds right there mm. now if i was holding it three. if i was holding that fish it looked like it was three pounds hold her up there chris six pounds if i was holding it three pounds chris is holding it so one of the keys to being consistently successful is to be willing to explore and not always just go to your go-to spots it's a hard thing to do but once you've got a few go-to spots and you know you can catch them there i know this sounds crazy and this is easy for me when i'm fishing with somebody else because i can send them to the known go-to spots but one of the things that i like to do is i like to leave my go-to spots alone after i've caught a decent fish or two there and I like to go explore and try to dissect the fishery and learn parts of it that I haven't learned or go, you know, try to catch a fish in an area that I don't necessarily expect a fish to be at that particular time. That process of elimination not only helps me find new spots, helps me develop new theories, helps me, you know, come up with new breakthroughs, but it also reaffirms my theory of where the fish are and where they're supposed to be. If I you know devise a theory and go out and it holds true that i catch these big fish but then i go somewhere else and catch them as well then my theory doesn't hold true but if i go fish and eliminate empty water then it helps prove my theory it helps solidify it and then those become even more of a go-to spot but more important than that along the way you're going to regularly find that spot on the spot or place within that whole context where there's going to be more fish uh, and you're going to add you know that much more to your arsenal when i'm fishing public water one of the things that i like to do is try to fish against the grain don't fish where everybody else is fishing look for places uh, if i'm fishing an area where people fish look for that spot in that place that doesn't get pressure that that spot that doesn't get fished uh, that place that gets overlooked and that's not the one that's the hot spot on the map or the one that jumps out at you on your navionics app because if it jumps out at you on your navionics app or on your down on your chart it's going to jump out to everybody else so you know i look for subtleties i look for real small subtle cues and things that are going to help me find fish uh, in places that other people aren't finding them that's the great thing about the kayak is it can get me into places and catch them where others can't but developing a mindset and a philosophy of of continuously trying to learn and continuously pushing yourself to explore more there's no substitute for time on the water i call it the toe factor but getting out there and exploring and maximizing your time on the water is gonna make you a better angler. There's as much to be learned or gathered in a lot of scenarios from a day on the water that's not successful as there is from a day on the water that is successful, and in some cases, even more. So make sure that you're a, you have a focused effort. Make sure that you understand what you're doing. If you're happy just going out and grinding and throwing, oh, there was a fish, <laughs> missed it. Uh, you know and strain in water then that's your therapy then go for it but if you're if you're dedicated and you want to catch big fish and you want to become a better angler and the cerebral part of it the the challenge for you is figuring it out then do me a favor and get rid of all your favorite spots in a particular area and make them off limits to yourself for a couple of trips and force yourself to go learn the areas that you don't know that well and you might surprise yourself well guys, we took a little break for lunch, 
headed back out. I was actually still getting camera equipment ready and uh, Chris was chomping at the bit. I ain't even changed back into my fishing clothes yet. And I heard him hooting and hollering and uh, come over and that is what he got. Put her on the lip grip, threw it back in the water and he just got himself a Highland Rim freaking stud. <laughs> I'm gonna pull around and, and see what she looks like on the boga. But that, uh, that right there is why you keep fishing post spawn, but you change up the game plan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you what adjustment we made in this week's Big Bass Breakdown. All right guys, so for this week's Big Bass Breakdown, let me stop and take a look and show you what I've got Chris fishing with. So Chris got his first ever double digit bass by basically following a simple principle that I use. And that is to fish recovery areas that are the same as staging areas. And so after the spawn is over, the bass, will, the big females will return to the same areas that they staged in pre-spawn uh, to feed back up and to regain that weight and to recuperate from the rigors of the spawn. So one of the baits that I like to use is a bait by Strike King called the Scorcher. And the reason it's called the Scorcher is it's got a, a really keel-shaped head. It's wide at the bottom, narrow at the top. It's short and compact. It's not flat-sided where it wants to turn up on its side. And it's got narrower, thinner blades. Now, these blades are not only narrower, shorter, but they also have more concave in them than normal. If you follow the series and you notice that pre-spawn, I like to flatten that out and get a wider arc. Post-spawn, when the fish are a little more aggressive, they're chasing bait down, they're trying to feed back up and regain that weight. I want to fish a bait that I can run really fast. And so when it comes to spinner baits, the Scorcher series from Strike King is one of my favorites. Uh, this is a sexy shad color. It's got a silver blade, uh, nickel blade, nickel kicker, and a little gold in there just because there's a slight tinge and I've got a little bit of cloud cover moving in and out. So I just wanted that little bit of gold flash in there. But for the most part in clear conditions, clear skies, uh, I'm using a nickel blade, a natural colored skirt, natural colored bait. Uh, and that did the ticket. So I basically backed off and let Dan know where he needed to fish, showed him a couple of areas. He went over there and the first place that he looked for a big old recovering female, he found his first double digit bass ever. So congratulate Chris Sawyer in the comments below for his personal best. And if you're looking to find post spawn bass, get out there, get aggressive, cover a lot of water, fish the peak feeding times, but use something like a buzz bait or a spinner bait, and if you're using a spinner bait, you can't do any better than the scorcher bait from Strike King because it allows you to burn it really fast. It doesn't turn on its side. It tracks true. It's got a really tight arc. The blade spins good, puts off a lot of flash and vibration. The skirt is standoff, so it has a good bait fish profile. You really can't beat that bait for post-spawn, finding big females in staging areas that are just in recovery areas that are just like the staging areas that they set up on when they're fishing when you're when you're fishing pre-spawn so after they move off the beds check the same places that you found them pre-spawn you'll find those big girls in the recovery mode ready to gobble something up all right guys so as i transition from one place to another i want to tell you about a common thing that most people don't think about when it comes to fishing the spawn the post-spawn uh, pre-spawn, you know, pre-spawn, this isn't really relevant. Spawn, this isn't really relevant, but post-spawn. Here's the tick, here's the deal. You go out and you beat the banks, you throw the lure in the water, and a fish hits it immediately. And you comment to your buddy, man, that fish hammered that as soon as it hit the water. Let me tell you what's happening in that scenario. The males are guarding fry, and so they're swimming around with their babies and anything that comes into that area that's a threat, they're gonna smash it. But what happens when you're catching those fish and you're reeling them in, is you're opening up those fry to predation from brim and, and, and other things that are in the area, you know, panfish that are gonna just go in there and ravage them while that buck is, um, you know, while you're catching them and dealing with them. And, you know, if you're fishing a tournament and you throw them in the live well, then he's, you know, he's definitely not guarding his fry and they're just, completely open to predation. So post spawn, anytime I start throwing to the bank and I'm getting hit immediately and it's buck bass, I generally decide that I'm gonna fish something different. I'm gonna move off. And pre-spawn into the spawn and post spawn, getting off the bank, I can't stress it enough, is critical. Get off the bank. The fish, when they spawn, they'll move up closer to the banks or they'll move up into shallow water. 
Uh, they'll find a stump or a log or just a, a hard spot on the bottom near a grass cluster or a cattails or something like that and they'll spawn. But post spawn, find yourself secondary points. Find you some submerged wood in a throat coming out of a spawn area. Basically find the same places that they were staging prior to the spawn and fish there. Get off the banks, let the buck guard the fry, let the fry, you know, get a little bigger and they'll and it'll help your bass population so again when you're having fun throwing that buzz bait or swim bait and they're smashing it as soon as it hits the water just keep in mind while they're doing that uh those bull brim and and, and copper nose and, and pumpkin seed and all those things are having a field day with those fry because the buck's not around to protect them the females move back off into deep water and that's where you need to be to catch her and by deep i mean anything you know, in that four to 10 foot range. It doesn't necessarily have to be 20 foot, but they're moved off and they're staging and they're feeding up to recover from the spawn. And that's where you that's where you want to find them. So the ticket is to get off the bank and find those secondary locations, staging areas, because now they're recovery areas and catch the big fish there. You know, for me, it's as exciting to go out and catch a big bass, or it's as exciting for me to help somebody else catch a big bass as it is for me to catch it myself. So this is kind of the tail end of my three-part series on the spawn. You've got your pre-spawn, your staging areas. Then you got your fish moving into the beds. Then you got your fish coming out of the beds and back in the staging areas in the recovery phase where they're feeding up to recover from the rigors of the spawn. So we were able to catch in this three-part series, big fish, fish over eight pounds, and in two instances, fish over 10 pounds by following this simple principle. Spend some time on the water. The number one thing that you could do is what I call the tow factor, and that's time on the water. It can't be replaced by any gimmicks. It can't be replaced by reading articles or watching me or anybody else on YouTube, but knowing what to do, looking for those secondary points near the staging areas, knowing what side of the lake is gonna warm up first. So. Hope you enjoyed this Big Bass Breakdown. We're going to, to really put this all together in a three-part synopsis series on phases of the spawn. That video will be out real soon. But do me a favor, give the video a big thumbs up if you like it. Comment below. And as always, please subscribe to Kayak Bass and TV. And once you subscribe, make sure you turn on your notifications to get, uh, to get a push to know that I've released a new video. And we've got some new bass action headed your way. So again, I'm Chad Hoover. I got to thank all you KBFers out there for all your support. Please do me a favor, give the video a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.